Hi everyone, my name is Mike. I'm going to explain some basics of web development here. It is based on my own experience and it will be primarily focused on creating dynamic interactive pages which you can build for fun or for your school projects. I have been doing this since I was in grade 5. This will also help to understand fundamentals of programming which you need for grade 10, 11, and 12 computer science. Another important thing that I'm going to explain is publishing web pages on Google Sites. Most of you have Google School accounts, which automatically include access to Google Sites. It allows publishing web pages and making them visible within the school board, like this page that my sister created for Christmas. You may also make pages visible worldwide with your private Google account, using other web hosting services or even running your own web server at home. By the way, running your own web server and running your own Minecraft server is very similar. I used to do it as well, and I can explain it here if there is an interest. Anyway, here's a quick introduction about web pages and how they work. Basically, a web page is a script or program that your browser loads from a server or from your computer. The language used for a script is called HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. HTML is pretty straightforward. I'm going to create a simple program that will direct your browser to display something on a screen. You can use literally any text editor to type a script. I'm going to cover some popular tools for web development later. Today I'll be using TextPad. So here, now I'm going to type the code for the web page. Then, we need to save it as an HTML file to tell the operating system what type of file it is. So, save it on desktop, and I'm going to call this lesson 1, and make sure it has a .html extension at the end. And now, I save the HTML file. And if we double click on this, It'll open it in a web browser, and this is what our web page looks like right now. And now there are a few uh, important things that I would like to explain. HTML script has a number of keywords, also known as tags. They are surrounded by less than symbols and greater than symbols. Some of these tags are paired, like those that you can see in the code. They consist of opening tags and closing tags. The closing tags have a slash in them right after the less than sign. There are also single tags like this one here. And later we'll learn some more of them. The tags shown in the script are, min are mandatory and should exist in any HTML script. Although browsers now are very smart and may recognize your script if you omit some of these tags or make mistakes. In reality, most of the pages on the internet have many errors. In order to see it, you can go to validator.w3.org and look at Amazon.com for example. And you will notice that there are many errors but the browser still display them without any errors. We can also remove a number of tags here. And you'll notice that our browser has no problem showing our page and it still works. Coming back to a program, I am going to explain what each tag does. 
the doc type HTML tag is a standard thing and just tells the browser that you're using HTML language for the script. The tag HTML defines the block of HTML code. The tag head defines a block of settings like title or icon which you'll add to the script later. The tag body defines a block of content uh, which in the script is just the text hello world. This is an example of a typical static HTML page which doesn't have any scenario that changes page. Now let's make it dynamic. I'll add a button tag to launch something funny when the button is clicked. Here, button is another paired HTML tag. Everything between the opening and a closing tag is the text that will be displayed on the button. This button has an onClick attribute which defines a function. This function will be called when the button is clicked. A function is a block of code with a name assigned to it. In web development, we use another programming language called JavaScript to create such functions. A cool thing about JavaScript is that it allows changing and even animating the page. For example, let's try to change the page background to an animated image when the button is clicked. First of all, we need an image. I'm just going to Google for it. And uh, I want an animated GIF image of fireworks. Now let's find a good quality one which doesn't contain any logo or and is free for download. So this one here doesn't work, it has a logo. Um, this one here is okay. But I found one which I like the most and it's this one. And now you have two options. You can either save the image to your computer or save a link to the image. And I'll show you both. Right click on the image and select save image as and then choose your desktop and save it there. Another option is saving the internet address of the image and for that right click and choose save image address or copy image address and the image location is copied to a clipboard and we just need to paste it somewhere we'll paste in new textpad document oh no we don't need to save it now in order to add a javascript function we'll add a pair of script tags. I have already created a function that I'm going to paste here in the script tags that I'm going to make right now. These script tags have an opening and a closing tag and in them they hold JavaScript code. And here's our function. And now we just need to add an image name to the URL. So this is the image that we got from the internet. Now if we go into rename, we can copy the image name. And so we go back here in our text editor and we can paste it. Then save the code and refresh the web browser. And as you can see, a new button appeared here. And when we click on it, we get fireworks. Now let's go back to the code and see how it works. The magic spells that I just added 
assign certain properties to the page, and I will explain them in more details. When a page is being created, in addition to displaying the content of the page, a browser generates an hierarchy of page elements. This hierarchy is called document object model. You can think about it as your house. For example, the, the main object here is a document, which is similar to the house location. It has an address similar to the internet address of the page. Body of a page is like the house building. And by the way, you may recall the body tag that we used in our script here. Style is a set of properties that um, describe the DOM element. They have attributes like width, height, and color. Here we are changing the background of the page, which is probably equivalent to painting your house. For example, there is an attribute background color, and we could set it to any color. So let's set it to yellow, for example. And now, if we load the new program and press the button, you'll notice that the background changes to yellow. Now, it may be hard to apply firework style to your house, but it can easily be done in the page. Regarding the other two properties, I will demonstrate what they do. If you disable them, the page will look a bit different. So here, you'll notice that the image has repeated several times. And now, if we enable this line again, uh, this sets the background repeat property to no repeat. And what this does is it makes it so that the image does not repeat and is shown only once. Now, if we enable the last property, and you set the background size property to cover. You'll notice that when you click the button and the fireworks appear, they cover the entire page. And this background size set to cover uh, makes it so that the image is stretched and covers the entire page. And so the last thing that I'm going to do today is publish this web page on Google Sites. Go to Google Sites. Make sure you are logged in with your school account. Choose the blank option. This page allows you to build your own site using various options. As long as we're going to use HTML code that we already created, Click the Embed button, select Embed Code, and then copy and paste all the code that is inside the body tags. Click Next, and then Save or Insert. Now expand the box so it fits the width of the screen. And then uh, click preview and we'll see if the program works. And as you notice, it does not work. And the reason for that is simple. Uh, Google Sites does not have our fireworks image that we have on our computer. And, uh, and there are a couple ways to fix it. And the best way is using the image address that we saved previously. 
So first of all, I'm going to do it in our local HTML file. So copy this link that we saved earlier. And replace this uh, URL to the new one. Save it, and then reload the local HTML file. And as you see, it shows the exact same thing. But the key difference is that in this case, the page downloads the image from the internet. And now, let's copy the new updated code to Google Sites. So here, click Edit delete the previous code and paste the new code. Click Next, Save, and let's click Preview to see if it works. And as you can see, it works fine. And now we can publish the page. But before we do that, uh, we can completely remove the title panel to get more space for a page. Later, you can add it back if you need by clicking the Add Header button. And then add the title. I'll call this Fireworks. And then change the background to something dark. You can also play with themes and go here and just find a theme that you like. I'll use this theme. And now when you're ready, you can publish your page. If you're publishing a page for your first time, I will ask you for a website address keyword. By default, it'll use your title, but if this address is already taken, you can choose a different one. Um, And now we have an option to view the published site. And this is our page. And when you click this button, it still works like usual. And now you can share this link with your friends and teachers within your school board. That is probably it for today. You can read more about DOM settings that I used at W3 Schools. This resource is also very useful if you would like to learn web technologies on your own. Next time, we will continue working on this project. I will tell you about JavaScript variables, if command, changing other elements of DOM, toggle buttons, and we will apply these things to the fireworks page. In the meantime, you can try to practice making your own page. It doesn't necessarily have to be fireworks. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like this video.